People asked, is it best for me, Master, to walk the straight path or would it be better for me to choose the crooked path on which my spirit leads me? The Master replied, he who takes the straight path north sees the north. He who takes the straight path south sees the south. He who takes the straight path east sees the east. He who takes the straight path west sees the west. And he who walks the crooked path sees all the directions. Please comment. So, in praise of the crooked. There was a crooked man. You need to understand. This… who said this? Do you know who said that? No? No, not the question. Who was the master who said that? No? Okay. Okay, probably, most probably from the Zen tradition. <clears throat> this is being said because people were getting identified identified with different dogmas. When they said a straight path, they were talking about a dogmatic path, following scriptures and teachings in a certain way. So if you're facing north, it goes only north. If you go west, it goes only west. East goes only east, south goes only south. But if you take a crooked path, you will see all, but you will not get anywhere. <laughs> you take a crooked path, you make a whole round, you have a good sightseeing tour, but you're back in the same place. So, are you here to do sightseeing or are you here to get somewhere? That's a question. I'm not trying to discredit what's been said because that's definitely been said with reference to dogmatic ways of doing things. But I want you to look at it because if you are thinking a crooked path means that you can afford to be crooked, there is no such path. <laughs> you can take a bend in the path but you got to be straight. If you are thinking somebody is approving your crookedness, <laughs> if you are crooked, there is no path, there is no such thing. If you are straight, everything is a path. There is no such thing as straight path, there is no such thing as crooked path because the path is inward. Where is it straight? Where is it inward? If you go north, I would say you are wrong. If you go south, you are definitely wrong. If you go east, you are wrong. If you go west, you are wrong. If you go up, you are wrong. If you go down, you are wrong. Spiritual process will happen to you, not because you look up, 
not because you do look down, not because you look in the four different directions, but because you look inward. Inward is neither north nor south, nor east nor west, nor up nor down, because what is inward is dimensionless. That which is dimensionless can neither be approached by a straight path or a crooked path, but only by somebody who is straight within himself. Being straight within himself simply means at least you're straight with yourself. You've gotten used to bullshitting others, it's up to you. If you do it, slowly situations will push you to your corner. In the larger societies, you can bullshit a little more, there's little more opportunity to get away with it. In a small society like this, if you bullshit two people, that day everybody knows you are a heap and they know where to put you. <laughs> because here, gossip is an effective means of communication. Everybody knows this person did a little bit of nonsense here and there and there, everybody knows. In the larger society, you could bullshit them a little while longer, but there also, if you bullshit too much, they'll push you to the corner. Maybe that's how you got here. <laughs> so, if you want to go anywhere, the first and foremost thing is that you are straight. Then don't worry about the path, whether it's straight or crooked, up or down. Those are all created just to make you feel little adventurous. Actually, there is no path. You stepped out, you projected your whole life out, which is very illusory. If you stop the projection, everything is inside. Even now everything is inside. Please tell me, where do you see me? Not here. I am entering through the windows of your eyes and you are seeing me within… within you. I am within you right now, you hear me within you. The whole world is within you, everything that ever happened to you is within you. So, the outward projection is an illusion. It is like, if you turn on the projector, the cinema is on the screen. It's all real. If you get involved with it, it's all real. In the cinema, people have fallen in love much more with the people that they saw two-dimensional on the cinema screen than the three-dimensional people who are around them. Isn't it so? Isn't it so? More people on this planet have fallen in love with the two-dimensional play of light and sound than the three-dimensional play of flesh and blood. Isn't that so? Because they turn off the lights, that's the main thing. You do one thing, go and watch the greatest cinema with all the lights on, Your hero and heroine will not look attractive. The lights are all off. Naturally, your focus. <laughs> they became so beautiful. They became so attractive simply because all other things were cut off just by switching off the lights in the cinema hall. In a way, that's what meditation means. You close your eyes. And if you simply sit here, initially for a while the outside insanity plays itself out. If you simply sit in the right kind of presence, then 
after your outside nonsense has played itself out, there is no other distraction, you just look at this one, this is an explosive form of life. This is not a simple life. Now you saw the cinema in two-dimensional figures and those people that you saw in the cinema, you fall in love with them much more. Somebody told you, love thy neighbor. If he had only ta told you, love your cinema star, it would instantly his teaching would have worked. His neighbor, There are two. <laughs> There's so much room for distraction. If all distractions are taken away and you just look at anything, you'll fall in love with that, anything. You look at an insect, you look at a flower, you look at a twig, you look at the mountain, you look at the rock, you look at a grain of sand without any distraction, you will absolutely fall in love with that. That's what meditation means. So, you don't go on a straight path, nor do you go on a crooked one. You stop doing this foolishness of doing straights and crookeds and bends. You learn to be straight with yourself and don't try to go anywhere, just be. Simply, here, it will happen because there is nowhere to go. There is no way for anybody to experience anything outside of themselves, please see. There is no way for you right now to experience anything outside of yourself. Anything that happens to you happens only within you, never outside. So what path are you talking about? path is always about going somewhere. When you have no need to go anywhere, then you are on the path. It's neither straight nor crooked. It is neither long nor short. It is definitely north nor south. It is inward. Inward is not a direction. Inward is a dimension. It is just that the problem with the spiritual path, the problem with lots of you being here is just this. On a certain day, an old farmer, a considered to be wise, was carrying a big bundle and approached a tunnel. He was just about to enter the tunnel, then he thought, it's all right, the tunnel is wide enough here, I can enter this, but that little hole that I see there, I'm sure I cannot get out of it. And he backed out. So, this is something that your mind cannot understand because when you say a path, it's about going somewhere. Nobody understood a path as not going somewhere. Always the word path simply meant to go somewhere. There's a very common joke played in the rural areas of Karnataka. If somebody comes to the village and it is normal to ask, that means where does this road go? That's how the language is. So the smart answer is, that means this road will lie here itself, it doesn't go anywhere. The road never goes anywhere, it's you who has to go. So, when we utter the word path, naturally your mind thinks there is somewhere to go. 
there is nowhere to go. When I say nowhere to go, that does not mean stagnation. I am talking about really nowhere to go. I am not talking about some where to go. Some is only this much or that much. No is limitless, isn't it? Something means a certain quantity. Nothing is not a quantity. It is another dimension which is measureless. It is another possibility which is beginningless and endless. So we are talking about nowhere to go, really nowhere to go, not somewhere. Somewhere is too small a place, it's not worth going. Nowhere is a limitless space. So if you go north, you will go somewhere. If you go south, you go somewhere. If you go east or west, you will go somewhere. If you go around, you only go somewhere. That's not our intention. We want to go nowhere. Is that okay? Because the journey is from the limited to the unlimited. The only unlimited is the nothingness. The nowhere is the only unlimited space. So, are we just talking with some, just enjoying the circus of using logic in all kinds of funny ways? You ask the question because still your mind is in such a state that every day thinks up a new way of avoiding it. It's innovative. You're all very innovative, aren't you? Every day you come up with a new reason why it cannot be done. I have convinced you a hundred times over, it is possible. At that moment you said, yes. Tomorrow you came up with a new innovation as to why it is not possible. So still the mind is in that state. So you like this logical mind which seems to come up with lot of innovations to keep you in its own ambit, to keep you within its limitations. So let us look at it from its perspective from the perspective of the logical mind. Now we understand, the logical mind also understands, the intellect understands that we exist within certain limitations. You are existing within certain limitations. And you also know you have to go beyond these limitations. Many times you have crossed some limitations and immediately you found the next range of limitations. You cross these mountains, the next range is ready. You cross that, the next one is ready. Those of you who have actively crossed, you have seen again and again there seems to be new mountains. Some of you like the same old mountains. You up and down the same thing. That's different. So the logical intellect, if you apply it with sufficient intensity, it clearly realizes that it is not the vehicle to take you beyond. So, if you do not know how to transcend the intellect, at least frustrate the intellect, Yes. You do not know how to transcend it, at least let it get frustrated, beaten. Then it lies low.
when it lies low, we can do things with you. If <clears throat> If you really want to step inward, it is not that you have to kill the outward because the outward is an illusion. There is enough scientific proof today to tell you the outward is an illusion because everything is happening within you. If you see that everything is inward, there is nothing outward, then naturally you will close your eyes. Even if you have not been initiated into anything, if you just remain with your eyes closed for long enough, you will see after some time the activity of the mind will start dying down. Initially it gets hyped up because it wants you to open your eyes because mind cannot survive without some extra information. Every day it needs some little extra new gossip, otherwise it cannot thrive. So, if you simply remain with eyes closed for long enough, you will see the intellect will just lie low. It will be like your pet dog. Be there, we don't want to kill him. We need him. But we need him when we need him. When we don't want him, we want him to just shut up and sit there. We don't want him to be all the time yelping and barking endlessly. We want him to shut up and sit. When we need him, we want to let him go. Otherwise, we want him to lie low and he will lie low. Once your intellect lies low, if you give it enough time, then the true intelligence begins to function. What you call as a intelligence and what you call as a source of creation are not different. Once that begins to function, you are naturally a blissful being, there is no other way to be. Once you are touched by the source of creation, once you stop playing your own games, from the petty information, from the gossip that you have gathered, what you call as information is just gossip. Some people, if you li don't like the people who are gathering information, you call them gossipers, otherwise you call them social scientists. isn't it? <laughs> so, this gossip that you have gathered, your intellect is thriving on it. If you keep your gossip aside and if true intelligence begins to function, then you and the Creator are not different. Once this is so, being blissful is very normal. It is not something that you aspire for, it is not something that you long for, it is not something that you create, that is the way it is. Only when you are blissful by your own nature, then you are willing to drop into the abyss of nothingness. Then you are truly ready to go nowhere. When you are not blissful by your own nature, it is very natural for you to hanker, to go somewhere. You want to go north, south, east or crooked. Whichever way, you are still longing to go somewhere, you are not willing to drop into the abyss of nothingness. When you say, I am seeking the boundless, you are talking about falling into nothingness. It is not a threat. Oh, is it a bottomless pit? Yes, it is. And a bottomless pit is not dangerous. Only a pit with a bottom is dangerous. 
If there is no bottom to the pit, what is the problem in jumping? You will be eternally suspended, unharmed, untouched by anything. If there is such a space which is bottomless and if you fall into it, is there any danger? Is there any danger at all to you? Only if it has a ba bottom, you will go and get smashed. It is truly a bottomless pit. Bliss is a bottomless pit. Only when you fall into the bottomless pit are you truly blissful. Otherwise, you are constantly hankering, wanting to get somewhere, wanting to get somewhere. You cannot go anywhere, wherever you go, whether you go north or south, still your experience of life, all of life is happening only within you. You go up or down, all your life is happening only within you. This is not a trap, this is the door. <laughs>